Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what happens behind the scenes. Uh, because I think what, uh, what's really interesting about Einstein, about this technology, is really what the artificial intelligence is doing to generate these notifications. Um, so, you know, we're capturing really high granularity energy data. There's some tech stacks on here um, that, you know, essentially the, the message is it's much, much faster than the grid. And so we're pulling really rich data um, out of the building. Um, we put, this, put together this little animation to show uh, kind of three-phase power. We're capturing these sine waves. This entire animation was one sixth of a second, so we've slowed that way down. So we're capturing a lot of data really fast. And essentially what we're doing with that data is um, looking at these kind of weird aberrations here that you can see these kind of peaks and valleys. Uh, and there's a lot of really rich information in there. And so what we can do with that using the AI is two primary uses, demand management forecasting and motor fault detection. Um, demand management, we're using this huge amount of very fast, very rich, granular data that we're pulling off of all these different devices in the building to construct a really dynamic forecast of what we think is gonna happen. Uh, we currently forecast every hour. Um, and, and we can use that to do all sorts of things around demand management in terms of tying into a building management system or a building automation system and actually affecting changes to the operational profile of a building before you hit those spikes and before you cross those demand thresholds. Uh, to actively save money, and I'll show an example of that. Uh, on motor fault detection, it's um, essentially a form of predictive maintenance. That's kind of the holy grail of uh, industrial IoT, is figuring out when things are going to break before they do. And uh, one of the things we can do is using motor current signature analysis is actually identify these degradations in motor operation and equipment performance um, that can be indicative of a failing piece of equipment. So on the forecasting, um, for those that like machine learning terms. Uh, we use a deep learning recurrent neural network model. Um, essentially what that does is it generates a probability distribution for estimated power consumption. And I have a little animation of kind of how that works. Um, so what we're doing here is uh, every five minutes we're looking out one hour. And uh, we're sort of drawing these, these blue dots or kind of the probability distribution where we think energy is going to uh, land. And then the red line that's following it is the actual demand. So you can see it's a pretty accurate model. And essentially what we then do is, as I mentioned, we compare that to a known threshold. So this is, um, this is just to set expectations. This is a hotel in San Francisco um, where we're currently running uh, active integrated BMS um, controls. And this is about 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., which is why you see this tail off overnight. Um, and then it comes back up in the morning. Um, and, uh, and so then what we do is we compare that to the threshold. We look at all of what's happening in the building, all these different devices. Um, how they're using energy and where the energy is going. And if we think there's a chance that we're going to cross a particular demand threshold that's either indicative of uh, a new billing tier um, or perhaps just our, our kind of monthly peak where it's going to charge us a super peak rate, something like that, um, we then set this control algorithm into action. So kind of this part of the algorithm, we have a BMS control that uses BACnet, it talks into the system, and it says turn off this specific piece of equipment. So uh, at this hotel in San Francisco, we're installing the HVAC system on a set of exhaust fans um, and um, one other piece of equipment uh, basically in the HVAC system um, where we're able to uh, basically affect these controls. So what we do is we look at you know, what's going on and we take these little red times and, and we take over operation of that piece of equipment. So we sort of pull it off the automated system on the BMS um, and we tell it what to do instead. And the way that the artificial intelligence differentiates this solution is traditional ADM strategies are essentially a, a demand and a call and response thing where the utility sends a signal and says, we're gonna have a peak event, you need to curtail demand, um, we're gonna shut down your entire HVAC system for four hours. Uh, what we do is we actually dynamically manage that demand 24 seven. And so here's sort of the, the normal um, peak load of the building. Here's our managed peak demand. Consistently, 24-7, across the building, we're consistently lower on demand. And that's a really unique thing in terms of demand management, that ability to continuously optimize the operation of this equipment uh, without actually impacting occupant uh, comfort, health, or safety. Um, we're doing it entirely in the background, no manual intervention, um, and without any occupant impact. Um, so then I'll talk about uh, some of the motor fault stuff. So um, again, I said we're, we're capturing really, really high granularity data. We're looking at this very wide spectrum. Just to show a point of comparison, this little yellow sliver 
is the amount that a normal submeter or utility meter would see. So this is sort of the richness of data that we're collecting beyond existing solutions. And what we're doing is, is we're looking for these sort of changes over time and, and this normalized operation. So this is uh, another Livingston facility in the UK. Uh, where we've deployed some systems in one of their manufacturing facilities, actually where we build Einstein. Um, so those systems are deployed there. And uh, so this is just a, this is about two weeks of data. So this is very sped up. Um, sort of tracking this frequency domain over time and looking for these changes. Again, the, the artificial intelligence is, is learning. Um, it's monitoring continuously. It's trying to figure out what's going on. And it's looking for those changes over time that are indicative of something um, potentially going wrong. Uh, with that richness of data, we can do a lot of things. And so this is a, a little bit of a, a Python graphic uh, that we've put together to show the estimation of motor speed. So using this high definition motor current signature, using all of this like frequency tail, uh, everything like this, we can intuit all sorts of things about the motor, the number of rotor bars it has, uh, the size of the windings, um, and also the motor speed, which I think is a really interesting thing. So this is a probability distribution, sort of showing these red bars of where we think the motor speed is happening. Once we know, or we have a good guess of the motor speed, uh, the system can then start to um, do some pretty unique frequency domain analysis. Um, and I apologize, this is getting a little technical, but I'm trying to sort of get to the point uh, from a functional standpoint, which is that we, we look at this sort of narrow band of the frequency domain around 60 hertz, which is the grid frequency. Um, and we look for these sort of abnormal tail variations. And so this is um, a motor that has a broken rotor bar. Uh, it's the internal piece of the motor that uh, essentially means the electricity is being disrupted as it flows through the motor. Um, and you can literally see that disruption kind of looking here. And so where this disruption happens is a function of the size of the motor and how fast it's running, which is why that motor speed estimation is such an important component of what the AI is doing. And so, again, I have an animation of that same motor um, in Livingston with that frequency band highlighted here. And essentially what you see is there is a little bit of an aberration, but it's not large enough to, to rise to the level of, of a failing motor. And so, although there would be no alert generated there, uh, what the system would do is continuously monitor that and watch for those changes. And so it would look in that frequency band and say, okay, we're at you know, a certain level, we're gonna watch if it goes up or down. And as it starts to go up, signifying that a rotor bar is, is failing or has completely failed and maybe that failure is starting to cascade, we can track the degradation of that motor in real time and alert those uh, building operators. Um, essentially the way we do that is, uh, uh, oh, one, one other thing, uh, short cycling detection, which is another common failure um, of, a, uh, of a motor. Again, a, a Python graph that's essentially transforming, this is uh, minutely data uh, out of our system uh, compared to a known threshold for short cycling. We sort of map it where we start to see these consistent um, sort of repeated occurrences above that threshold, uh, we then generate a notification. So uh, Mark had mentioned tracker. Um, essentially what we do is we, we send an alert straight to the mobile phone uh, or to email of a building operator to just let them know that there's a problem, something that they should check out. And, um, and uh, then we also have a professional engineering staff in terms of value added services that we can help them do ROI analysis on early replacement, um, other things like that. So um, that is the demo. With that, uh, I will turn it over to Mark and John for any questions.